What's up YouTube, it's No More Op 4 here with part 4 of my Bivouac gear loadout series. This section is going to cover the different choices for water, food, and cookware. Obviously an important area of consideration. And uh, you know, this is going to vary depending upon the, the time frame of your trip. But I, I see that this area seems to be one where people either over or under prepare for and it causes their trip to be less enjoyable. They may have to leave early because they didn't pack enough food or they packed too much of food or anything else. And uh, you know, they just didn't have as much fun because they're carrying around all this extra weight. First thing we're gonna actually talk about is water and what I carry with me. Now again, this is going to vary, but I'm just going to cover a pretty broad stroke here. I'm always going to have on any length of time trip, my 100 ounce bladder. This is Blackhawks. It fits in any of the packs that I would have uh, with me on my trip. The other thing that I'm always going to have with me is this 32 ounce canteen. So right here, between the two of these, I've got 132 ounces of clean drinkable water. Now, water requirements are gonna be different for every person. I'm sure everyone has heard eight glasses, eight ounces of water a day. That's 64 ounces for you math majors out there. But, you know, that's kind of a, you know, good enough for everybody, one size fits all kind of recommendation. Even the US Army Manual says drink when you're thirsty. Uh, thanks for the tip guys. That's just showing you our tax dollars hard at work. Um, what I typically recommend is I personally like to drink at least 64 ounces of water a day. It's a great improvement in how good you feel when you actually do that. Just a side note. But what I have, the 132 ounces to start with, that's going to be enough for any of the drinking that I'm going to need to do or drinking for my dog if uh, she's along with me. But that's also going to cover me for cooking, cleaning, or any other camp tasks that I'm going to have. Now what I do with this system is I always keep the bladder clean. No matter what, contaminated water never goes into the bladder. But what I will do is after I've, uh, after I've consumed all the water in the canteen, I will on the shorter trips use the canteen to purify water or to collect dirty water, I should say, not to purify it. Uh, I collect the water in this canteen and then I will put it in one of my pots or whatever I have with me to boil that water and clean it. Now that kills the Giardia and the other micro in it, microorganisms that might be in the water. That doesn't clean it like a filter will, but I don't really collect water from areas that might be, you know, have some, uh, some bad things in them if you live in an area with mining or anything like that. Uh, I try to avoid those areas for collecting my water. But uh, for me, boiling water is all I need to do. And you can do that with a fire and a pot. So once I clean the water that I've collected in the canteen, from it being boiled, I'll let it cool off before I dump that water into my bladder. Uh, on longer time period trips, what I actually do is I will bring empty gallon jugs. And I'll usually bring two of them. I may carry one and I may, if I have a friend with me, make him carry the other one. It's very lightweight to just tie a gallon container on the back of your pack. What I do with that is I have, I designate one the clean water and I designate one the dirty water. I will use the dirty jug to collect water from the source, such as a stream or a lake or wherever I'm collecting it from. From there, I will, uh, I will purify it by boiling it in um, one of the pots that I have with me. And from there, once I let it cool, I will dump it into the, cl the clean container. Now what this does for me is it effectively gives me a whole nother gallon of ready access drinking water in addition to my 132 ounces that I already have without having to carry a full gallon of water into the woods with me. I see a lot of people that try to carry all of this water into the woods and I'm like, why would you do that when you can just collect it and clean it? Um, if you're into practicing your bushcraft skills, cleaning water and finding, procuring drinking water is a necessary skill. So that's something that you should start to practice. 
So for food, there is really no magic calorie number that's going to make sense for everybody. There is no one size fits all. Uh, I'm just going to show you a couple of the different types of food that I bring along and we'll talk about some specifics. Uh, the first thing that I like to bring along is easy, no prep required food. Things like cliff bars or trail mix uh, that you can basically just pull out of the packaging and eat. We've got an assortment of different things here. Jerky, uh, again other cliff bars, different things like that, energy bars. I'm really not a fan of too many energy bars. I do like cliff bars though. It's good to have some variety though because you can get very tired of cliff bars, I can tell you that. I went on a trip once. Um, I tried to switch it up just with the flavors of the cliff bars besides my real heavy meals at night. It was the only other thing I was eating. You'd have to have some variety. Um, it's one of the reasons I like trail mix. This is just one that I got at my local, local grocery store. And when you're looking for trail mix for, just as an example, some things you want to be looking for, you want to consider uh, some of the different requirements that your body has you may not be getting with some of the other things you're eating. Obviously there's some quick sugars in here, uh, but there's also salts in some of the, like they've got walnuts and almonds and things like that in here. They're salted. You need sodium in your diet, especially when you're out exerting yourself and things like that. So you want to have, uh, just keep in mind what's in what you're actually eating because when you're out in the woods, you're not always thinking about that kind of stuff. And uh, you can be losing your sodium and things like that, your sodium content. And uh, you can feel shitty and not really know why. It's because you're having or you're only eating certain type of food and you may be lacking uh, some of your other required daily vitamins, minerals, things like that. So I'm not a food expert just from my own experience. Um, the other thing then, besides the, uh, some of the quick and easy to eat foods I like to have, <clears throat> are the preparation required foods. Now this is one of my favorites. This is Mountain House's Beef Stew. And I've also got some other varieties here. Backpacker's Pantry, granola with bananas and milk. That is amazing. You'd think powdered milk would be disgusting. It's actually pretty good. Um, this one I haven't tried yet. I just bought it the last time it was at REI, but it looks pretty good. It is called Shepherd's, uh, Shepherd's Potato Stew with Beef. It sounds pretty cool. I'm gonna have to try that afterwards. Um, and speaking to sodium, you have to also be careful with these freeze-dried foods or things like that because they are always going to be very high in sodium content. Kind of opposite end of the spectrum from what I just said, but you don't want to overdo it either. Um, those are just some of the examples of the um, preparation required foods. Now, Obviously, depending on weather, you may also be able to bring some other things. Maybe some meat if it's cold enough, or eggs if you've got one of those little containers. Usually don't do that too often, but that is something that you can do. In addition to that, you can also, if you're in an area that allows this or you're into this kind of thing, collect your own food, fishing, you know, or if you are um, one of those people that's real knowledgeable with the plants that are in your surrounding area, you can also eat those. I don't recommend doing that for people that are new to it. I am familiar with a lot of the plants around here. Uh, I think it's necessary to do so, to be familiar with them, but my interest in that is more of a medicinal purpose. Uh, you know, finding plants with antiseptic properties or things like that. I try to stay away from really eating any of them, but I do have some books on those. Maybe something for you to look into. Um, in addition to that, you know, you can always bring salt and sugar, things like that. I really don't do that too much based on the types of food that I'm eating. But uh, again, this isn't, you know, we're not camping out of the back of a car. So it's, it's really going to be down to what I can carry. And for the minimum impact that a little bit of salt and sugar is going to have, I'm really not going to bring that with me. Uh, now again, as I said, there's no real requirement or magic number for the amount of calories that you should be eating in a day but I typically what I try to do is when I plan these kind of trips especially if it's going to be more than a couple days is I try to shoot for having maybe 25 to 50 percent more uh, of the calories required for the first couple days typically those are going to be the heaviest those are going to be when I'm doing the most traveling I'm going to be doing the most work setting up camp 
or processing firewood. But after those first couple days, you know, you're not going to be having as, as high of a um, food requirement as you do on those heavy work days. Um, just another thing I want to throw in there, again, this isn't a shit hits the fan scenario, so we're not expected to survive off, you know, 400 calorie mainstay bars, one of those a day. Um, go out and work in the woods, I'll go through one of those in the first 15 minutes that I'm out there. So, uh, takes a lot to keep the fire burning, for me at least, I'm a, I'm a big eater myself. But uh, I always recommend having extra food, you know, if you're on like a one or a two day trip, Maybe like a half a day or one day extra is good. But if you're longer than that, you're going to want to have a day to, again, it's a factor of how long you're staying. But on a five-day trip, I'd probably want to have one to two days extra food just in case. You never know what's going to happen. I'm not saying you're going to get stranded out there, but you may end up eating more food than you think or some of your food may go bad or one of the members of your group might eat your food or maybe some critter came along and uh, and ate it. Um, we'll talk a little bit about that in a second, but it's also, in my opinion, good to have some morale boosting foods while we're on the subject. Uh, what I mean by that is something just a simple hot chocolate at the end of the day, if you're a coffee person in the morning, or this really isn't considered food, but you know, if you, you're a cigar smoker, something like that at the end of the day, right before you go to sleep, is a nice way to calm yourself down give you that creature comfort, you know, maybe bring a, a candy bar if you, you have a preference to that. Just a creature comfort to calm you down at the end of the day is a great way to end uh, a long day of work around a campfire with your buddies, whatever, girlfriend, whoever you're out there with, um, family if you're bringing kids, obviously. Some s'mores are always nice to have, that's always a good time. So those are just some ideas for morale boosting I try to incorporate on my trips when I can. Last thing we're going to talk about is just some of the cookware that I use. I have previously reviewed some of these items. Some of them are newer. I haven't reviewed them yet. Um, my main cooking kit is my GSI Pinnacle Duelist kit. I have reviewed this system. Uh, you can check the video out on that. It's a nice system for two or more people or if you plan on doing a fair amount of cooking. It's got this pot in addition to these two little containers. Again, you can check out the review for that. Recently just acquired from Steep and Cheap this backcountry um, 700 milliliter titanium cookware, this little, little pot here. I like it because it's the perfect size to fit one of my fuel canisters, my Isopro fuel canisters for my MSR. Uh, it's also not really a bad size for, I use this to be honest, as a cup. Um, if I'm going to have hot chocolate, I'm not a coffee person. I'm going to have hot chocolate or even just maybe make some tea, something like that. I just heat it up, let it sit for a second and use this as a cup. Um, the titanium itself cools pretty fast, so I don't ever burn myself, but it's a good size, perfect for fitting a canister in. I put these little cotton balls in here just so it doesn't really scratch up the bottom. But that is a nice little container. Not really big enough to cook food, but you can make it work if you had to. Obviously, as I said, the MSR Pocket Rocket. Also previously reviewed, you can check that out. It's a nice little lightweight cooking system. And what else I got here? I've got this Explore Grid. This is a, I think this was like $10. This is a total creature comfort. Oh, I don't want to say creature comfort. Kind of just a convenience instead of having to try to build some intricate system or use rocks, which you can do. Damn flies. Uh, you can just bring something like this out. A lot of times I'll just take some 550 cord and tie this to the outside of my pack. Uh, but it is nice for setting things on to cook over the fire, or maybe you don't want it to be that hot. You've got a elevated away uh, laterally to the fire, it's an option. Uh, as far as utensils, I don't get too complicated. I've just got this C to Summit kit. It's got a spoon, a knife, and a fork. It's really all I need as far as that goes. Uh, I've also got this little pot lid grabber. This was like $2. It's pretty, excuse me, 99 cents. Um, 
don't want to have to bring oven mitts or anything, obviously, to grab one of these off the fire. Now this does have a handle, but you can see here, and in my review I show it too, that's got a little bit melted, but just, just an easy uh, tool to have with you. As far as for preparing specific fish or game, uh, I do have a couple different knives that I use, knives that I use, excuse me, and those just kind of vary depending upon what I'm doing, and there's just too many variations that I have because I have so many knives. Uh, maybe I'll do a video on food preparation in the summertime once it's I get out and start doing some more fishing, uh, small game preparation, things like that. I'll probably do those in the future. Obviously, you can also bring tin foil. That's pretty useful, especially for cooking fish. Uh, again, I may do a clay bake where I'll use natural clay to bake a fish. If you don't have tin foil, uh, it's something I've got on my radar to do. And then lastly, as far this is for actually food storage. This is usually what I'll carry my food in. These are called Opsacks. They're odor barrier bags. They're made by a company called Locksack. L-O-K-S-A-K. Basically, they're leak-proof, airtight seals, uh, sealable bags. They will. I don't. I don't know that I 100% believe that they're really scent-proof. That they'll not let any scent escape but I think that they're good enough that they will uh, you know, mask the sense of any foods you have. Anything sweet, sugary, you wanna put in here. If you're in an area susceptible to uh, inquisitive animals, specifically bears. I don't have that problem too much around here, but in a neighboring state that I go to, uh, one of the places I camp is the uh, highest con concentration of black bears uh, in the surrounding area. So I use this just to be safe. What I'll do is I'll put the different types of food in these little Ziploc bags and then stuff them all in here typically. It's just peace of mind so you don't have to worry about a bear lumbering through your camp at two o'clock in the morning uh, and having to run out in your tactical sandals. But uh, that is it for food storage. Again, it's pretty straightforward, nothing groundbreaking here. Just wanted to show you some different options for things you can bring. Um, when buying some of these freeze-dried items, if you're a person that does go a lot, does go out and have to cook their own food, it's usually better to buy these in bulk. For the smaller items, obviously, you know, it's gonna be preference. There's a lot of stuff I didn't show here. You can bring canned foods, things like that, soup, uh, beans, anything like that. Obviously, easy to cook, easy to bring along. Uh, just some general ideas for food, water, and cooking. That's it for this part. Stay tuned for the final part, part five. I'm going to go over what you've all been waiting for, the different uh, tools and miscellaneous items that I bring with me. But that's it for right now. As always, this is No More Op For. Stay safe. I'm out.